Elizabeth, it's great to have you here on Charisma. I know our time is short because you have a lot of people that want to talk to you about season five of The Chosen. And I know the big thing that I talked to Dallas about recently is that The Chosen season four is on the CW. So I love that people are getting to see and to experience The Chosen in more powerful ways. What has this experience been like for you seeing this this show go from the fledgling uh, couple episodes to where it is today? (laughs) Yeah, it's it's been incredible. Um, I it, it feels like a, a whole lifetime ago, but it also feels like yesterday getting the audition and getting the scripts for the first four episodes. They were, you know, crowdfunded at that time. And um, it was in the middle of nowhere in Texas. And I I thought this is cool. This is a really cool project. I had no idea it would get to be where it is today and so quickly, too. I think that. Um, that really, you know, shows the, I think, passion of our viewership and, and of our audience. Um, I think everyone's hungry for for this story being told in, in this way, in a lot of ways, which is very human and very relatable. And these characters are just like us and they're messy and they need help. And um, it shows the the difficulties in, in following someone like Jesus, who is radical at that time, so radical and um And yeah, so I mean, it it really lends itself to some pretty dramatic moments, which I think really is great for TV. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I I know we're getting into season five, and you guys are. I I believe you've you've wrapped up filming for that, Uh, and so I'm I'm looking forward to what is to come. But before we go into what is to come, I want to talk about one episode that was specific with your character, um, and just how Mary kind of fell away for a little bit. Um, Tell me about you having to portray this this aspect of what it's like for somebody to be so close to Jesus and then to fall away, but ultimately be brought back. It was uh, easy (laughs) because (laughs) I think that's what we do all the time. Um, I think, you know, for Mary, she's she's triggered. Um, It's season two and the episodes, I believe, are five and six, where she's mm-hmm. really triggered by the things from her past. Um, she runs into a, a man who's possessed, who calls her by Lilith, which is what she used to go by. And um, it's, it's reminds her of everything she went through. And, um, and sometimes when we get scared and triggered and, um, and unsure, it's, it's, easier to to rely on our old habits and our what we used to lean on and for her it was um sort of self-medication it was alcohol it was gambling it was um numbing herself and and um and it's a little harder to to rely on on the new tools that she has and the new community she has and on Jesus who is there always for her um and so she you know she does come back to the group and and she does have this beautiful scene with Jesus where she apologizes to him and really kind of shares what's on her heart, which is, I, I can't live up to this. You saved me. You completely reformed me. And um, and I, I don't know how to repay you. And I still don't feel worthy of that. And I just think that's a very common and very relatable feeling of, um, you know, sometimes Sometimes we we forget how loved we are and how um, special and important we are to God and um, and I think that's that was nice for the show to to you know portray that in such a yeah. relatable way. Yeah. So Mary, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Elizabeth, <laughs> who plays Mary, uh, your your character arc is obviously more developed than we see in uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and so but we're leading to the uh, to the Passion Week, to the crucifixion, and ultimately the, the resurrection. Um, tell me whatever you can about season five and specifically from your character's perspective. I don't know what I can share, but, uh, <laughs> but there is, uh, uh, you know, in season four, um, which is out on the app. So <laughs> I won't yeah. not too many spoilers. Um, the whole group goes through so many tragedies and because of Mary's experience with darkness and tragedy in the past, she, I think has, a a a leg up in some ways in dealing with it and managing and handling it, knowing that this is part of life and it is 
challenging, um, but that Jesus is here and there, there is um, that you must continue on. You must continue forward with your faith and with hope. And, um, and in season five, we see as things sort of escalate to, to new heights, um, that same sort of um, slight understanding, or at least understanding that she doesn't get to understand everything, um, that, that continues on with her. And as, as things are sort of crumbling around them, um, she kind of pushes forward and has, has her own, um, agenda to try to help. And, and she really, there's a strength in her and, um, a determination in her that I think those are the characteristics that we recognize in her being at the crucifixion and at the resurrection. So it's these characteristics that we haven't really seen that much from her before, but starting in season four and five, I would say like, that's kind of the Mary that we all know. Yeah, well, I couldn't get any spoilers out of you, so good job on that. I know. <laughs> that, <was> not hard. <laughs> that but you did a good job of just painting a picture that of we we know what's going to be coming, um, and it's uh, it's it's going to be beautifully depicted, and it's going to draw people closer to Jesus, which is what's really important. But there's also this community around the chosen that is a lot of fun, and I know that there's the chosen con, uh, the, the convention. Can you tell me about the, the the that experience and also interactions with fans? Yes. Um, so this is actually going to be my first year to be there. I didn't I didn't get to go last year scheduling conflicts, but I heard that it was so much fun. Every actor that that got to go was really and really enjoyed it. Um, I'll be there this year. Um, it's it's so many incredible panels of groups of actors that are talking about different topics and everything and some crew panels and um and then meet and greets. And uh, I think there's like, I don't know, I, I don't know how many people are going, but I think it's quite a bit, but there's also virtual tickets. So if you, mm. if you can't get to go in person, uh, you'll be able to watch uh, all of these events and these panels and these discussions online, which will be really fun. And yeah, um, yeah I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be my first chosen con. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah, I, I love all the interaction that Dallas and the team has been able to cultivate around this. So it's not just wait for the next season. It's, hey, here's little snippets here and there. Here's, you know, some behind the scenes things that they've been so good about building this community. And I think with that, the actors and everybody that's involved, even whenever you have other projects, um, I find myself wanting to see what Elizabeth is doing uh, in the the shift. I loved that film, okay. by the way. Thank you. Um, and whenever Jonathan is doing something else, or you know, uh, any of the other actors, yeah. it's it's really cool to be able to see how it. This is not just you're so connected to the chosen, but it's also expanding to other things that you're doing. Family, yeah. I'm yeah. This uh, there's a couple projects that I'm in that are coming out in the next few months that I'm really excited about. That I think fans of the chosen will really enjoy. That's very cool. Elizabeth, thank you so much for speaking, for taking the time to join us here on Charisma to talk about The Chosen. Uh, I tried, to, but unsuccessfully, to get you to talk about season five. But uh, thank you so much for being here. And we look forward to seeing everything that, that God has for The Chosen. And we appreciate you.